Welcome to the John and Heidi Show podcast, brought to you by DirecTV, 1-800-259-7646. Also brought to you by RVWheelitor.com. If you're buying an RV or selling an RV, check out RVWheelitor.com and the Dollar Shave Club. Here's John and Heidi. Thank you so much for listening to the John and Heidi Show on a Wednesday. Hey, baby, how you doing? Super, how are you? Fabulous. Uh, we've got a lot of fun stuff coming up today. We've got a guest on the program. Guess who we're going to be talking to today? Who's that? Jordan Goodman, and he is America's Money Answers Man. So uh, he's on, like, all over the place. You'll watch him on Fox, on CNN, on a lot of different money programs. He's a writer for Money Magazine for years, and I tricked him into talking to us. So yeah. <laughs> going to ask him some money questions. Hey, have you ever heard of a smartphone? Yeah. Yeah. Have you ever, you ever like smart cars? How about a smart bra? No. It was recently unveiled at the Consumer Electronics Show. The creator claims the bra measures the wearer's heart rate and your steps. So there you go. You can get a brassiere that'll tell you how much your heart rate is and what your how many steps you take. So mm. something you might need. <laughs> hey, a study finds that tattoos reduce your chances of getting hired. And that has been a statistic that's been true for Did years. Did they need a study for well, that? No, the, that's the, ridiculous. The percentage of people who say that's the case has gone down, but it is still the case. So there you go. Uh, tattoos are becoming more and more commonly accepted, but they're saying that you still have a slighter chance of getting a job if you have visible tattoos. Yeah, visible. I mean, that's that's the key. You can get them. Just put them put places it, where and, nobody sees them unless you show them to make them. Make them nice. Heidi wants yeah. me to get a tattoo of Angela Lansbury. <laughs> I only wish I was kidding. She literally said that last week. It was the funniest tattoo I've like, ever seen in tattoo. my life. It was in a tattoo book. She's like, you should get this tattoo. Angela Lansbury. Like, get out of here. All right. We got some special stuff coming up today. We'll tell you what in a bit. This portion of the program is brought to you by Dollar Shave Club. Get razors for $1 a month plus a few bucks shipping so you can enjoy fresh razors every month for as little as $3. Learn more at dollarshaveclub.com slash radio. Today is a special day, Heidi. Do you know what today is? What is today, John? Today is Wednesday the 13th. I don't know if that matters, but it's Wednesday, January the 13th. doesn't quite sound the same as Friday the 13th, does it? No. Yeah, no. Wednesday the 13th, and today is National Sticker Day. I love stickers. Do you? I, oh, I got a sticker right here on my computer. I've got, you know, I like stickers. I'll I liked stickers, stickers when I was like 11. I just never grew out of it. I like stickers. <laughs> uh, it's Make Your Dream Come True Day today. So whatever your dream is, make it come true. Heidi has weird dreams. You be careful on which dreams you make come true. I had the weirdest dream Earlier this week about my cousin Nicole. Did I tell you about that? Let's wait till we're off here. <laughs> Today is also Rubber Ducky Day and Public Radio Broadcasting Day. So we got all those things going. And uh, yeah, so get out there and make your dreams come true, come true and maybe stick a sticker on something and you can celebrate today. Thanks for listening. On the way, we've got uh, a professor of shopping. What? Yeah, it's a thing. And what else do we have? Uh, the case of a creative drug dealer makes it in our This Is Your Brain on Drug segment. All of that and much more on the way on the John and Heidi Show. This portion of the program is brought to you by RVWheelitor.com. If you want to buy or sell an RV, go to RVWheelitor.com. List your RV for free. Learn more at RVWheelitor.com. You know it's true because you heard it on the radio. The professor of shopping. Yeah. What are the three R's in school? It's reading, writing, and arithmetic, right? <laughs> Even though I think only one of those is really an R. Well, now they're saying it's reading, writing, and retail. Glasgow's Caldona University in Scotland is offering a new class to its students, Shopping 101. You could be a professor, I Heidi. would love to have had the opportunity to have taken that they class. They even have a professor of retailing, Professor Christopher Moore. He says the department will examine how consumers select products and how they interact with each other and with staff. Shopping is not just about going into a store, he says. It's about the whole gamut of human nature. What you buy says a lot about who you are and who you want to be, according to Professor Moore. Would you like to have a degree as a professor of, or just, I don't know, what would it be? You wouldn't be a professor. He's a professor. So what would you be? You'd be a retail shopping expert then? What would it be? I don't know. But that would be awesome. I have a, uh, I'm Dr. Heidi, doctor of shopping, doctorate in shopping. Yes. That would be awesome. Um, you know... I don't know that you'd probably fit into this class because you're a bargain hunter. I am. Kind of sounds to me like they're they're talking about other but stuff. But they're here. but they are studying people's habits as to what makes them buy certain things. So on sale, 
That's what makes you buy things. No, 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 no. Come home with cat food. It can't food. be we just don't even on have a cat. Sale. That is not true. I've never done that. <laughs> it's not been quite like that. No, you do buy things that are on sale. There are things that we don't even need, but you'll buy them. You came home with what you referred to as a mystery fruit the other day. It wasn't even on sale, though. It was something I've never tried before. But I buy you, mystery fruit all the time. If I'm in know. the fruit section of the grocery store and there's stuff I haven't tried, I buy it. Yeah, a we lot. still don't know what this thing is. We haven't opened it. I've well, noticed. I'm not sure how to eat it. Uh huh. Well, I don't know if you eat it like a grapefruit, where you <laughs> cut it in half and then eat it with a spoon. I don't uh, know. I don't know. We'll have to see if somebody can identify <laughs> our mystery fruit. Anyway, if you'd like to get your degree in shopping, you're going to have to head to Glasgow Caledonian University in Scotland. And you know it's true because you heard it on the radio. The John and Heidi Show is brought to you in part by the Keystone Treatment Center. This is your brain. And this is your brain on drugs. We share silly stories here on the program, but addiction is no joke. If you or someone you know suffers with an addiction to drugs or alcohol, make today the day you seek help. Call toll-free 844-204-1055. That's a toll-free number. Again, 844-204-1055. And this is your brain on drugs. You could call it a case of creative drug dealing, maybe? Athens, Alaska police have a 38-year-old man in custody for allegedly accepting gift cards for payment for crack cocaine and prescription drugs. Police Captain Marty Bruce, a spokesperson with the police department there, said the man was arrested and charged with possession of a controlled substance. Bruce said officers executed a search warrant in the man's house and they seized crack cocaine Xanax pills, $889 cash, and $175 in gift cards to different businesses. So some people could afford It all afford spends cash. the same. They're like, well, I don't have the money, but my mom gave me a gift card. Can I give you that? It <laughs> so. spends the same. He's probably going to go to those places anyway. Yeah, he's going to go to jail, so he's not going to use <laughs> any of it. So uh, there you go. Yeah, he was a, a very uh, creative drug dealer. You don't get the money? You get any gift cards? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Coming up, we've got your moment of duh. That's on the way. This portion of the program is brought to you by Keystone Treatment Center. Addiction is no laughing matter. Call Keystone Treatment Center toll free at 1-844-204-1055. When I was a kid, Wendy's had a commercial where they said, where's the beef? Remember that? Mm-hmm. And that's uh, something that one Wendy's customer will never ask ever again after receiving this. $12,000. Accidentally received $12,000. Now, how did that happen? A Wendy's in Sacramento, California, for some inexplicable reason, stored $12,000 of the restaurant's money in a food paper bag. Oh, my gosh. Along with a food order that was being made. The bag (laughs) was accidentally given to a customer. Instead of their hamburger order, the customer has disappeared with the money. Well, why would you give it to them? Exactly. Moment of doubt. Why would you have $12,000 in cash stuffed in a Wendy's bag? You I would mean, have given the money back to him. You would have I said, would have. excuse me, there's $12,000 in with my burger. Absolutely would have. I went to the bank one time, and I made a deposit, and they gave me my deposit slip back with the money. And it, I saw clearly on my deposit slip that it was deposited, and it, I, but I also still had the money. And I went back, and Heidi was like, why are we going back? I'm like, because that's wrong. She's like, you sure you don't want to just keep that? <laughs> I was like, you're like the little devil on this shoulder over here. <laughs> I'm glad I got a John Angel on this shoulder over here. She's like, well, it was their mistake. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, but if it was their mistake and they accidentally took our money, you'd be mad. So no. Most we're people back. have a good voice and a bad voice. And their bad voice always sounds awfully similar to you for some reason. <laughs> my and my I have a good boy, voice and a bad voice, but my good voice has taped my bad voice to the bed and put duct tape over its mouth. I think so. Anyway, coming up, we've got your scoop of the day. That is on the way. The Scoop of the Day is brought to you by Wells Blue Bunny. If you want delicious ice cream, be sure to look for the Blue Bunny. Sure to have your favorite flavors. Learn more at BlueBunny.com. Time now for the Scoop of the Day. In the future, the Lyft car that picks you up could have an empty driver's seat. A $500 million investment from GM and their long-term strategic alliance between a couple of companies has announced uh, about a week ago now that they have a self-driving car they're working on. The Lyft app alerts drivers when you need a ride, but Lyft, along with Google, Uber, Tesla, and other companies, they're interested in autonomous vehicles. You know what that means? They're vehicles that can navigate the road without anyone behind the wheel. I just... We've talked about this before. I think this is a really bad idea. Well, they've taken one more step about a week ago into making this happen. Hey, I wonder if this lady and you would get along. Uh, Part of me says I'm pretty sure you would, but attorney... 
Colleen Gorman of Chicago has an annual tradition after the new year where she checks into uh, looking for hangover remedies. Mm -hmm. Every year she's looking for a better hangover remedy for the year. And her fiancé says she should just quit drinking. (laughs) But she says, uh, and that's good advice for everybody, she says the only way to prevent a hangover is to not get drunk. Boston University researcher John Howland agrees. He said, you know, there really is no hangover cure. She's tried weird things. Uh, No, but there's no hangover. She said she's tried things that people recommend. One is a peanut butter sandwich. No. Sports drinks. Heidi's is a Big Mac. Big Mac. Yeah. It's still not a cure, though. Oh, it It is, too. It makes you feel better. (laughs) Anyway, they're saying the only thing that's proven to work without fail is not drinking in the first place. You know what really stinks is I hardly ever drink, and there are times that I'll have a hangover and I didn't even drink. I still feel terrible. It's a sympathy hangover. Yeah, I think it is. Hey, uh, a study out of Oregon State University found that women are far less likely to exercise for 30 minutes every day than men. Men got 30 minutes. Women averaged 18 minutes, Heidi. I think that role is reversed I for think us. that's definitely reversed in our... I'll go in and I'll walk out of the treadmill for a few minutes. I'm like, I'm done. This is more walking <laughs> than I would have done. So uh, if you need me, I'll be back at the office. I've already done way more than I do on a regular day. <laughs> oh, my God. I, you should be thankful I did this. <laughs> <laughs> do, you, do you get sad or depressed when you can't check your Facebook status? If you do, you're not alone. Researchers show many people feel upset or lonely when they're deprived of access to the Internet. You know what? I honestly think I feel better mm. when I don't have access to Facebook. When I've been without my phone for, yeah. like, if we go on vacation yeah. and I am I turn my phone off for the whole week, I feel so much better. Well, your Facebook is a lot different than most people's Facebook. Yours is my designed Facebook to is make people awesome. angry. No, it's not I'm looking either. at your Facebook and it's so violent and crazy. I'm like, who are you <laughs> friends with? What is going on over there? Well, the study revealed 53% of people feel upset when denied access. 40% feel lonely if they can't get online. Our kids were so upset with me the other day, I unhooked our wireless internet at home. Mm-hmm. So I had two kids that weren't behaving and doing what they were supposed to do. And it's not like they were being bad, but they weren't getting things done. I was like, you know what? If they didn't have access to the old internet, maybe they'd have time to do it. So It's about to be unhooked for a l- I think lot so. longer. Anyway, I struggled myself. I'm like, I need that internet back. <laughs> 31-year-old Amber McCarthy was arrested in Becks Hill, England, and her cornflakes are to blame, Heidi. Okay. She stole, a cor- allegedly stole cash register money, and flowers from a florist. And during the early morning crime, she was apparently munching on a box of cornflakes. She left a trail of cornflakes for 300 (laughs) yards all the way back to her hotel room where they found her (laughs) and her money and her flowers and her Uh. cornflakes. So she got caught stealing money and flowers because she was munching on cornflakes. Wow. Interesting. Now, let's turn to Fullerton, California. They arrested a 52-year-old Warren John Wilson, apparently had a bone to pick with bikers. He admitted he had nearly been run down by a cyclist to seek revenge. Uh, he dug one, let's see, dug nearly 50 one- to two-foot holes along a bike trail. Mm. So he dug 50 holes on the bike trail. So as they were riding, they were having all kinds of problems running into these things. And one sent a, a bike rider over his handlebars. Oh, Yikes. So he's facing a felony charge and vandalism for doing that. So don't dig holes on the bike trail. But he was upset because some bicyclist almost ran him over. So he's like, oh, get even with you. <laughs> I'm going to kill all bicyclists. <laughs> all right. Moving on to our strange law in Maine. After January 14th, you'll be charged with a fine if you have Christmas lights up. Wow. So if you your know lights what? are still up. I like up, that law. I, mm, uh, I think oh you should maybe gosh. have to turn them off. But to have them down, what if the weather's bad? This is in Maine. No, Jimmy, you should take them cricket. down. That's going to be kind of crazy. If you crazy. can't take them down in a timely manner, <laughs> don't put them up. Well, that's a strange law. This has been your Scoop of the Day. This portion of the program is brought to you by RoughToughKennels.com. Dog kennels and accessories sent to your front door wherever you live. Your dog deserves it. Learn more at RoughToughKennels.com. Thank you so much for listening to the John and Heidi Show. I've got a special guest on the line, and this is a guy that if you're involved in uh, watching news or listening to news and and information anywhere in the world, you've probably heard him somewhere else, but we're excited to have Jordan Goodman join us, and he is America's Money Answers Man. Jordan, how you doing, sir? Great to be with you, John. Well, it's exciting to chat with you. Uh, I know you're you're all over the place. Anytime there's something going on in the world uh, that has something to do with money, you're one of the people that uh, gets called on. So thanks for taking our call and being on our little program here. Uh, But uh, as far as the world right now and the outlook on things that are going on, what what kind of stuff is going on? I don't even know what to ask because I I don't. That's how uninformed I am. What's going on in the world with money right now? Well, you have huge. 
exponential upside. Think of it that way, John, to improve. How about that? There you go. See? <laughs> no, I mean, it's been very, very volatile. Last week uh, was the biggest down week in uh, American history. We've never seen anything much, much like that. China just crashed, I think is really the right word. It just went down extremely dramatically. Uh, we've had oil prices, which a year ago were over $100 a barrel, are now down to about 33 I think the overall trend is a deflationary trend. Prices are falling, and economic activity is contracting. And that's something that really means you have to change your attitude as a consumer and investor in various ways we'll discuss here. But that's the overall trend, is declining prices, uh, economic activity contracting uh, around the world. I mean, just to give you a sense, in China, China had been growing at 10%, now lately about 7%. Now maybe they're going to be growing at 2 or 3%. That is a dramatic decline for the second largest economy in the world, not only for China itself, but because China was like the, the big uh, vacuum cleaner for the world, they were sucking up all these commodities to fuel their growth from Canada and Australia and Chile and Brazil and South Africa and all these places. When they're needing less, that hurts all those other places as well. One of the reasons that oil prices are down so sharply is because of less demand from China. I mean, in your areas, you see a lot of rural areas, there's a lot less demand for wheat and corn and soybeans, uh, again, because China is importing less. So that's the big trend to talk about how to uh, kind of adapt yourself, both as a consumer and investor, to this deflationary trend. You know, I guess I, I remember as a kid, my mom would say, hey, what does that have to do with the price of tea in China? But the funny thing yeah. is, now, we're not necessarily the price of tea in China, but the price of everything exactly. in China. It affects everything in the world now, doesn't it? Really? does in a big way. I actually was in China uh, for about two weeks uh, last year, and amazing amount of building and infrastructure going on. Beautiful highways, beautiful trains, beautiful airports, all these kind of things. Um, and uh, tons of buildings. Literally, they have about 400 so-called ghost cities. Apartment buildings, uh, shopping centers, office buildings, as far as you can see, that are completely empty. Completely empty. Why are they they can't afford them? living to these things. It's insane. It's just insane. And they're building more of them, John. They're building more of them. Why are they building more if the other ones are empty right now? Okay. So let me explain something about China. In the United States, the way local municipalities are supported is property taxes. We may complain about it, but it's a nice, stable source of revenue for municipalities here. In China, they do not have property taxes. So each local mayor has a GDP uh, growth target that he has to meet by the end of each year. And so the way they do it is through real estate taxes. So here's the way it works. You're a Chinese mayor. You expropriate the land owned by peasants, give them more money than the peasants have ever seen in their life. You then turn around and sell that land to developers who build ghost cities, basically. And you make your money with the real estate taxes when they buy the land. Is this crazy or not? This is the way it works. That is crazy. So and so this is what I call the greatest Ponzi scheme in history. So I got a, I got a silly question. How about the peasants that they, they bought the land from? Where do they live then? Could they move into those cities? Or? They, they could move into the cities. That's right. But there's too few of them. I mean, these cities are beautiful. They're brand new. Uh, but the people cannot afford the rents that need to be charged. Now, a lot of people buy those apartments as investments, um, as so-called rental income, except you don't get any rental income if they're not rented out. But the peasants, yeah, I mean, there's a relatively few amount of peasants that get these windfalls. But most people, I mean, they're, they're a lot of employment in building these ghost cities. Now, I was in Beijing for about a week, Shanghai for about a week, and I took in between the two is what's called uh, the, the, the bullet train. Very, very fast. goes about 240 miles an hour, you know, really, really fast, nice and smooth. All along that trip, I'm seeing... Uh, 50-story apartment buildings going in the middle of a rice paddy somewhere in the middle of a forest, like one after another after another for five and a half hours. Wow. It wasn't just the major cities that this building is going on all of the place. That's why the economy has been growing so fast, and they've been demanding commodities from around the world. It's all built on debt. Okay, this is not a good thing. So that's they're kind of coming to terms with that now and seeing that China can't keep over-investing in empty buildings. and It's not only buildings, it's factories. They have too much capacity all kinds of things. So that's the day of reckoning is coming, and that's what hit our markets when China slowed down so dramatically. So let's talk about the investor implication of this. Okay, mm -hmm. if you if you've got money in uh, stocks, uh, they're going down. And we've already had them go down a lot. I think they're going to go down a lot more. Another maybe thirty percent or so on the Dow Jones. So what you want to do in a deflationary environment, you want to have your money in safe, high yielding vehicles. We are principal is secure, 
and you're going to get a decent interest rate and not lose your principal. I'll tell you what I'm doing. This might be of help to some of the listeners. I'm doing something called Commercial Mortgage Bridge Loans, and there's a website for that, commercialmortgagebridgeloans.com. It's a way of getting a 6% yield super, super safely over a one-year time period. You get monthly checks, get your money back at the end of the year, at which time you can either take your money and do something else with it or do another bridge loan. Uh, so there's a way of getting 6% at the time when if you go to the bank, you're going to get zero on CDs, money market funds, treasury bills, savings accounts. It's ridiculous. Savers are being punished for trying to do the right thing by saving their money. There's a place you can get 6%. And again, I have material on this at my website at moneyanswers.com as well. That's the kind of thing you want to do in a deflationary environment. Your money is secure. You earn a decent yield of roughly 6%. That's awesome. Again, visiting with Jordan Goodman, America's Money Answers Man, nationally recognized expert on personal finance. And you've probably seen him on The View or Fox News Network or business uh, Fox Business Network, CNN, CNBC, CBS Evening News. He's everywhere. And now joining us here on the John and Heidi Show as well. And uh, will, will you let me call you again sometime? We have other questions Absolutely. about money. That's awesome. Just the beginning. This, well, that's great. Well, I'm cer- certainly excited to chat with you. Now, you've got several books, either author or co-author, on 13 best-selling yes. books. Where can we right. find those? Are those on your website as well? Yes, at moneyanswers.com. I'm just to tell you a few of them. I did one called Fast Profits in Hard Times, which I think is going to be appropriate for this year. I did a book called Master Your Debt, about how to get out of debt in various ways. The latest one I just came out with at the end of 2015 is called The Ultimate Guide to Student Loans because it's a huge problem, $1.3 trillion in student loan debt out there, and people are just being buried under student loans before they get their first job. So I have some solutions. I'm just giving you a solution right now. You can consolidate and, and refinance your student loans to a rate as low as 1.9%. People don't realize that's possible. Wow. There's a website for that, sofi.com, S-O-F-I.com, backslash money answers. That's a way of refinancing your student loans. So there's lots of resources out there, John, that people don't know about. They're not learning this stuff in school, and that's why I try to help them at uh, moneyanswers.com. And there's a myth that we've been hearing ever since we were little kids, what you don't know can't hurt you. Well, that's wrong. What you don't know can absolutely hurt you. Absolutely. Uh, this is an area that people don't have a lot of knowledge. You know, they go through school and then learn all about Greek philosophy and art and all kinds <laughs> of wonderful things. But, like, where do I get a better yield on my money? Or how do I pay my mortgage off faster? Or where do I get a good credit card? That they don't teach them, right? That's absolutely right. Again, Jordan Goodman, America's Money Answers Man, has been our guest today. Jordan, thank you again for taking some time to chat with us here on the program, and we'll certainly be reaching back out to you again. I know that there are things that happen all the time. Now, during a political year, because, you know, we've got this presidential election, uh, things uh, go up and down quite a bit. That that also affects uh, things in the financial market, too, doesn't it? Very much so. And the way this election comes out has a major impact on people's money decisions. I mean... The Republicans and Democrats have two completely different views of economic reality. Completely different. It's almost like they're on different planets, basically. Yeah. And I don't know who's going to win, but whoever wins, and the, and the makeup of the Congress as well, makes a major difference in tax policy, how much infrastructure gets built, uh, stimulus programs, uh, all kinds of things. So, yes, during this year it's going to be a wild ride. I personally think Trump is going to win the Republican side. And Clinton's going to win the Democratic side, and it'll be a battle royal to the end, and who knows what's going to happen. Well, we've got a little bit of time between now and then, but uh, I, I kind of think that would be an interesting, an interesting election for everybody to watch, if nothing else. It'll be very interesting, and it has a lot of impact on your pocketbook. Again, our guest today, Jordan Goodman, America's Money Answers Man. If you'd like to know more about Jordan, you can check out his website, moneyanswers.com. Jordan, thank you again. All right, thanks so much, John. I appreciate it. And thank you, folks, for listening to The John and Heidi Show on a Wednesday. This portion of the program is brought to you by CarsForSale.com. If you're in the market to buy a car, truck, or van, find thousands of vehicles to choose from at CarsForSale.com. Fun fact for you, Heidi. What's that, John? Experts at Johns Hopkins Medical School say the meters on treadmills that say how many calories that you're burning could be off by as much as 15%. I think they're very off. Like, I go a full mile, and I look at how many calories. I'm like, there's no way. Well, they calculate it based on an average body. (laughs) (laughs) They average it based on the average person's body type. So we're all different. (laughs) Fun fact for you, Heidi. What's that, John? I forgot how I do these. Uh, An Australian university study found that DVD screens and cars are dangerous 
because they you distract. Think so? Well, the ones <laughs> even in the back seat because they distract drivers behind you. <laughs> so there you go. Keep them down low where the kids can see them, but the back, but people behind you cannot. Fun fact for you, What's Heidi. What's that, John? The Hearst H U R S T Hearst Company estimates that their jaws of life have saved more than eight hundred thousand lives over the last thirty years. That's, That's pretty nice. cool. That's really cool. Yeah. And that was a trivia question. It says, this product uh, has saved this many lives, the Hearst Company's product. What is it? The Jaws of Life. So uh, instead of using it as a trivia question, I use it as a fun fact for you. There you go. What do you think of that? I like that. Coming up, we've got some fun stuff to share on the way. This portion of the program is brought to you by StoneGroupArchitects.com. It's more than a building. It's design and function working together. Check out the project portfolio at StoneGroupArchitects.com. Thank you so much for listening to the John and Heidi Show on a Wednesday. It's the 13th day of January. We're just cruising through this month. Cannot believe it. Seems like New Year's was just the other day, doesn't it? I know. How did that happen? Crazy. Well, if you wanted to make a New Year's resolution to lose weight, but you didn't think you had time, there's some good news, or maybe, I don't know, this might be bad news, but uh, experts say it's easy to sneak exercise into your routine, and you don't need to spend hours at the gym. They say it's really easy as squeezing in five minutes of calisthenics here and there, like sit-ups or push-ups in the morning, take a 10-minute walk at lunch, pacing while you're talking on the phone or watching television, even marching in place while you're watching TV. Melanie Jampolis wrote a book called No Time to Lose Diet, and she says even doing volunteer activity like coaching at Little League or whatever, doing something with your kids, packing boxes at the food bank, cleaning up in the neighborhood. These all help you shed pounds and you feel good because not only did they help you shed pounds, but in those cases, you're also doing something good for other people as well. We took down a Christmas tree. <clears throat> that was a lot of work, too. <laughs> it was a lot of work. It's a big tree. I like uh, While I was reading that story, Heidi was marching in I place. Was. How'd that go for you? I, I, <laughs> that was, lasted about two seconds, <laughs> and then I was like, okay, that was fun. <laughs> it was funny because I'm reading. You're over there marching in place. <laughs> I don't know if people can't hear it. Now, if you were wearing jingle bells or something, they'd be able to hear that. But uh, I think that's a good idea, just to be able to stand up while you're doing things or you know, to walk around while you're doing stuff. Our son is as skinny as a toothpick, and he'll be he walking around all, all the, the time. time. Even while we're watching a movie, he's yeah. just pacing. He's like walking around. I'm like, would you sit down? You're making me nervous. Are you like trying to dodge bullets? What is going on here? What have you done today? Are you afraid someone's trying to kill you? Please sit. But it definitely apparently works. And, and according to this, her book is called The No Time to Lose Diet. And she's just saying if you're if you're too busy to do other stuff, do a couple sit-ups before you jump out of bed in the morning. There you go. I'm going to try that. Try to remind me that, to do that tomorrow, okay? All righty. All right. We're married, so that's why we're in bed together. I just want to make sure in case you didn't know that. that <laughs> otherwise, that might sound kind of weird. Coming up, we got a fun story about turntables. Yeah, people are buying those again. It's on the way. This portion of the program is brought to you by DirecTV, 1-800-259-7646. Also brought to you by RVWheeliter.com. If you're buying an RV or selling an RV, check out RVWheeliter.com and the Dollar Shave Club. Here's John and Heidi. Thanks for listening to the John and Heidi Show on a Wednesday. When I started in this radio industry, every radio station in America had record players in them. Because they were still playing records. And right. I remember my first radio gig, I got to play some records on the radio. Now, a lot of those have been replaced with computers. And back in the day, every house in America had a record player. Well, a lot of those are gone. But you know what? According to Amazon, the record turntable was their best-selling audio device at Christmas time. Hmm. People are buying records again. Those large devices... Invented decades ago that play music off those really expensive vinyl records now. You know how expensive it is to buy records these oh, days? Oh, it's crazy. Do you remember for a while you could buy a record for like two bucks? Oh, yeah. People were giving them away. You go to a garage sale, they were stuffed in the free box. Well, now they're expensive again. We should have probably picked up some I of those love free boxes. records. I do too. I think they're cool. We've I miss, got some I record miss players. Records. Uh, we've got a couple record players and we've got a lot of records. Anyway, they, uh, for whatever reason, they sold a ton of those. Uh, more than any other audio equipment at Christmas time, Amazon sold more turntables than anything else. So I loved the smell of vinyl. Like you would take it out of oh, a yeah. little. Oh, That's I cool. miss. I miss that. Fun stuff. Well, we'll have to. We need to get our record player back it's, out. It's sitting in the garage. I'll, I've got like three of them in the garage. I'll we bring should, one of them in, and we'll we uh, we'll that. take a listen. Coming up, a nine one one operator in the news. We'll tell you why. This portion of the program is brought to you by GunUp.com. If you're a gun lover, you'll be in heaven at GunUp.com. 
built by experienced military veterans, shooting sports competitors, and publishing professionals. They have awesome stories and articles that are read by millions of gun enthusiasts. Check it out at gunup.com. This is kind of an interesting story here about a 911 operator. They get some bizarre calls. Well, man's best friend turns out to be woman's best friend as well and her lifesaver. An eight-year-old Irish setter called 911. Oh, wow. Her owner was in trouble. Judy Bailey suffered an asthma attack and couldn't wake up. After licking the owner's face, and that didn't revive her, uh, her dog, Lyric, got worried and dialed 911. How on earth do you suppose... I mean, do you think she trained him to well, do that? It says, it's amazing, said Char- uh, Charlene Hall, a dispatcher for the Nasha Fire and Rescue in New Hampshire. The dog is trained to go over and hit the phone three times to get 911, and then she barks into the receiver. Lyric is a specially trained medical assistance there dog. You go. And emergency workers say that day she saved a life because she knew what to do. Okay. So how cool is that? Uh, our dogs, every time it's I read like a story like this. It's not like it's a stray like that she picked up from the... <laughs> some dog walking by is like, hey, seems to be some problems here. I'm going to dial 911. But every time I read one of these stories, I, I love our dogs. I really do. But I'm like, they don't know nothing. Yeah, our dogs <laughs> can't, they can't call 911. Stupid. They don't do anything. Other than just, you know, sit there and stare at us like, you're going to give me a treat or what? (laughs) All right. Coming up, we've got fever, fever, fever on the way. This portion of the program is brought to you by Dollar Shave Club. You can get razors sent to your door each month for just $1, plus a couple of bucks shipping. It's an amazing deal. Log on to dollarshaveclub.com slash radio to learn more. That's dollarshaveclub.com slash radio. Now, back to the John and Heidi Show podcast. When there's an outbreak of things, isn't that called a fever? There's like a whatever, I'm trying to think of. Spring fever? Yeah, yeah. So if there's an outbreak of people having a fever, wouldn't that be like a fever fever? I suppose. Well, there's a fever phobia. That's only if you want it. A fever oh. fever would be something you're excited about. Well, this one's more of a fever phobia. When parents notice their child has flushed cheeks and hot to the touch, they often anxiously reach for a thermometer to check for a fever. And a pain reliever it brings it down. But fever phobia may be getting in the way of proper treatment. According to a study from the Journal of Pediatrics, fever is the body's normal response to any illness. So it doesn't necessarily mean it's bad. It means your body is doing the right thing. It's fighting this infection. It's doing its trick, uh, explains Dr. Janice Sullivan, professor of pediatrics and critical care uh, at the University of Louisville in Kentucky. About a third of all visits to the uh, pediatrician are due to fever, and they're usually caused by bacterial or viral infections. Most fevers go away fairly quickly, and they're benign, but many actually protect a child. So pain relievel, pain relievers are, can I try that again? <laughs> pain relievers are primarily recommended to help alleviate. So there you go. They're saying uh, sometimes when your kid gets a fever and you freak out and say, oh, we need to get rid of this fever, the fever is actually a byproduct of whatever's going on. That's mm-hmm. their, the kid's body is fighting something else. So there you go. There's a fever fever. Fever. Did I get all that right? No, not even a little. I've <laughs> never you. been one that's Thank been... Thank you for your support, Heidi. <laughs> <laughs> I've never been one that's been too overly protective when my kids get sick. I understand. Yeah, our, Most of the time kids, I tell them, you're fine. <laughs> walk it off. She told our daughter to walk off a broken arm once <laughs> and said, if that arm's not broken, I'm breaking it myself. <laughs> and then they went in and it was broken. She's like, do you want some ice cream? <laughs> I felt so bad. You did. But she's a bit of a drama queen. She is. Yeah. So I didn't believe her. You didn't break your arm. Your arm. She could fine. move it. It wasn't like bent fine. or anything. And Heidi felt awful. She's like, oh, wow, that really was broken. It didn't seem I walked to be. off a broken ankle. If I, I could walk too. off a broken mm-hmm. ankle, she walk could walk out. off a broken arm. <laughs> All right. We sound like awful people. Coming up, we've got some good news, though. That is on the way. This portion of the program is brought to you by DirecTV. Call 1-800-259-7646. They have hundreds of channels to choose from, with many packages to fit your viewing desires. Learn more at 1-800-259-7646. We always try to wrap this program up with some positive news, something good, something to make you smile. So it's kind of weird that we would start the story with this. When your baby cries, because that doesn't make you smile. No. But when your baby cries, do you know why your baby's crying? Well, there's an app that can help you now. Oh, an my app gosh. can differentiate between a variety of crying sounds made by babies. They've developed. <laughs> oh, my god! Taiwanese gosh. researchers have done this. According to Yahoo News, or as your mother would call it, Yahoo News. I think that's funny. <laughs> why does she call it that? I don't know. 
according to Yahoo, the Infant Cries Translator was developed at the National Taiwan Hospital uh, University Hospital in Yunlin. It can differentiate between four separate crying sounds by recording the sounds of babies and comparing them against a vast database of babies. Over a two-year period, researchers have collected how many cries, Heidi? Uh, who knows? 200,000. It's ridiculous. Yeah, from about 100 newborn babies. They're up- So wait a minute. So would that be like 2,000 2, cries per kid? Collected about 200,000 crying sounds from 100 newborns. So that'd be like 2,000 cries each. Mm. That's kind of crazy, if my math is correct, and it's usually not. Anyway, they're in an online database. The app shows analysis of a baby's cry on a phone, and within 15 seconds, it'll tell you what is Didn't you say this was our good news? <clears throat> yeah, this is good news. This isn't good news. This is stupid. No. Researchers say the app has a 92% accuracy for infants under two weeks old, helping parents know when the kid is crying. Why is the kid crying? Are they hungry, sleepy, sleepy in pain, or they have a wet diaper? There's another way to check that one, you know. The analysis becomes less accurate as the baby gets older. But for newborns, 92% accuracy. Mm. So they have a baby translator. I think that is really cool that we can translate even that. Uh, can they do one now for dogs? I mean, so when much of parenting barks, is common sense. You should know if it's been 48 hours since you fed your kid, <laughs> it's probably crying because it's hungry. <laughs> if it's been that long, you shouldn't even be a parent. But well, if you need this app, you maybe shouldn't be a no. parent. Maybe you should wait a little bit before I think it's a, neat a child. Idea. Well, you, t- tomato, tomato. I think it's cool. You think it's creepy. I think it's pretty interesting. Anyway, I'm going to share that on our Facebook page, facebook.com slash John and Heidi Show. I think it's really interesting. Like it's, I said. We were we were given the, these instincts. I mean, mm-hmm. we've never, ever needed this in the history of humans, and babies have turned out just fine. If we, if we go this route, those instincts will go away. Okay. That's stupid. <laughs> I, just, I don't have those instincts. If I hear a baby crying, <laughs> I'm driving along and I hear a baby crying, and I go, that baby's hungry. <laughs> that kid has a wet diaper. This thing could do it. It's, that's what they're saying. Uh-huh. Anyway, time to say goodbye, Heidi. Goodbye, Heidi. Goodbye, everybody. Have a great day. Thanks for listening to the John and Heidi Show on a Wednesday. Time now for the bonus break. Only available here on the John and Heidi Show podcast. The John and Heidi Show is brought to you in part by the Dollar Shave Club. They always sponsor our bonus break because I guess nobody else will. So we've got the bonus Only break. because they don't know about it. They don't yet. even know we're doing it. <laughs> they have no clue. Someday I'm going to get a cease and desist letter from the guy in charge there. <laughs> I do love their razors. I use them all the time. And if I, I swapped out my razor head the other day. Mm-hmm. And when I shaved, I couldn't believe what a difference it made because I apparently haven't changed it for like two weeks. And I swapped it out and I was like, wow, that is a lot smoother than usual because I end up using the same razor that you use on your legs, which that dulls my razor. Did you know that? I'm sure it does. Yeah. That's a, you're not supposed to use my razor. Get your own razor. Anyway, if you'd like to know more. Check them out, dollarshaveclub.com slash radio. Go check it out. It's a really cool way to get your razors brought right to your door. This is a fun story. Um, I'm not exactly sure how to go into this <laughs> other than police escorted a woman home from Walmart after she was shopping and eating and sleeping in a Walmart in Georgia for three days straight. Aww. She blended in with the general Christmas madness and sustained herself by eating the on-site blimpies. They had a blimpy store in there. When asked by employees at the end, why did you stay so long? She said, I'm shopping. But she was actually sleeping there, and she would eat there, and she was there for three solid days before she had to be escorted home by the cops. Huh. So, so she had a home. She just, yeah. okay, she whatever. She's hanging out there. She's like, I got nothing, nothing better to do. I'm going to hang out right here. For three days? Yeah, that's weird. If she wasn't stealing anything, I guess I don't know why I they made I wonder where she was sleeping that they wouldn't have caught know. her sooner. I don't know. She was blending in with the Christmas rush. Hey, things that we know thanks to the movies. Are you ready for this? Sure. All grocery shopping bags contain at least one stick one of French thing bread. Of, yes, I've noticed. <laughs> Why is that? Because it looks cool. It does look cool. Uh, once applied, <laughs> lipstick will never rub off, even if you're scuba diving. Right. Uh, number three, a man will show no pain while taking the most ferocious beating, but will wince when a woman tries to clean his wound. <laughs> Again, things we learned in the movies. A large pane of glass is visible. If you see it on screen, somebody will walk through it before too long. That happens all Pretty the time, much. too. Or be thrown through it. Uh, when paying for a taxi, don't look at your wallet as you take out a bill. Just grab anything randomly and hand it over. <laughs> it's always exactly right. Number six. 
It's always possible to park directly outside the building that you're going to visit. You ever notice that in movies? Oh, yeah. Like, hey, we got the camera set up. You can see the building. There's the parking space. That's where you're going to park. Yeah. And they never say, oh, that one's parallel. Let's go around the block until. <laughs> yeah, that's what Katie would do. <laughs> if I can't make it in nose first, I ain't going. <laughs> She's literally said that out loud. Uh, another Number seven on the list of things we've learned from the movies. A detective can only solve a case once he has been suspended from duty. You ever notice they always, that's like every time yep. something goes wrong, you're off the case, you're done, you're going home, you're taking time off, and then voila, he, he solved it, <laughs> amazingly. And then number eight, television news bulletins usually contain a story that affects you personally at that precise moment. Yeah. It's like timed out to, you're like, well, I wonder what happened to mom. Beep, 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 beep. <laughs> this just in, your mother has died in a horrific car accident. <laughs> oh, no. All right. Uh, this one here I'm going to skip. I'm not going to read this. because Oh, if it wasn't good enough for you, it must it be was, really yeah, bad. It's it's pretty. I saved it because if I didn't have anything else to talk about, that was going to make it. But it's just not going to happen. Uh, this one's going to make it, though. China is bracing for a baby boom, Heidi. Huh. Um, for those of you who were listening to this program just a little bit ago, when we were visiting with uh, Jordan Goodman, he was talking about these gigantic buildings that are vacant in China. They're building like 40 and 50 story apartments in China right now that nobody's living in. And when that one's done, they start building another one, even though there's nobody living in the other one. But he's saying that it's part of their plan. They're saying, hey, we have to build this to get ready. And they're building it because they get paid a certain amount for building buildings. But I maybe think this could have part to do with it as well. Their, their population is going to double here pretty quick. Why is that? Because China... They're bracing for a new baby boom under their new two-children rule. Before, every family could only legally have one child. NBC yeah. News says the law... I didn't know they had changed it, but that's good. Yeah, the law is now allowing couples to have two babies. It went into effect midnight, January 1st. The country's expecting a huge baby boom in about nine months or so. <laughs> They're expecting eight million extra babies every year after the controversial one-child policy has been uh, put out ushering in a new era of brothers and sisters for Chinese families. They've never, almost anybody that you know, if they're from China, they had no brothers or sisters because they couldn't. So many families, they have no clue what it's like to have siblings. Hey, China, if you're listening, it's not all that great. They're going to pick on you. I'm just saying. So get ready for you know somebody well, that's here's, a little bigger than you to pick on you. That's here's all that's the problem that they were running into there, though. They were having people that were drowning their oh, children and killing their yeah. little girls because they well, wanted a boy to carry on the family. You name. want to hear what happened, though? There was like a, a big turn on that because there were so many boys mm -hmm. that if you had a daughter... You could kind of name any price you want yeah. for your daughter. You could say, hey, if you want to marry my daughter, what are you going to do? Yeah. You know, you're not going to marry into this family. Are going to carry on the family name without a girl? Exactly. So that's exactly what happened. They had, uh, it was kind of like a, a huge turnaround where they're going, uh, you, yeah, you're going to have the name, but what are we going to get out of this yeah. deal? All right. One last thing here. Have you ever wondered why they call junk email spam? Why? We've had this conversation before, haven't we? Have we? I don't know. I think we did. Because I remember going, why do they call it spam? And you're like, I don't know. I don't care. <laughs> I still don't care. Pretty sure that was, <laughs> that was the end of the conversation. Well, for those of you who don't care, you can just quit now. This is, <laughs> this is the end of the program. But for those of you who do care, first of all, thanks for hanging in there <laughs> until the very end. Uh, but the word spam has become synonymous with unwanted email because of something that happened on April 12th, 1994, when email was still brand new. Do you remember April of 1994? No. Did you have email back then? Uh, no. I, I, I did not either. I definitely didn't. Well, Lawrence Cantor was a lawyer in Phoenix, Arizona. And he sent a bunch of unsolicited emails telling people about his firm. And it went to thousands of readers of online message boards. And somebody on one of these online message boards d decided to say, hey, here's the solution. This guy keeps sending us junk we don't want. Let's send him junk he doesn't want. Let's send him a bunch of coconuts in the mail and cans of spam to Cantor and Company, this law firm that sent out all this junk. Well, the coconuts, apparently more expensive than the spam, he got thousands of cans of spam sent to his office. And it had, the story blew up all over the Internet because he sent out unsolicited emails and they sent him unsolicited spam. And now the term has ever since been called spam. They call it, well, you, don't spam me, because he got a bunch of cans of spam in the mail. Hmm. Apparently, that's something most people would not have liked. Your dad would have been. My dad thrilled. would have been in heaven. He's like, "Wow!" <laughs> Finally, I have a can of spam in my office here. Uh, it's just the can. I have my pens in it because I thought it's a cool little can. 
They really are. Isn't that a neat looking can? It is a neat looking can. I've never seen anything else in a can that shape ever. It's just a very cool little thing. The Spam itself wasn't uh, amazing by any means, but it was, it was okay. I, I ate it. And my dogs liked it. But <laughs> okay. I finally, after, what, 10 years of Charlie telling me I need to try it, I finally yeah. decided to do it. So there you go. That's going to do it for the bonus break, brought to you reluctantly by the Dollar Shave Club. <laughs> Learn more at dollarshaveclub.com slash radio.